For the millions of Americans with impaired bladder function, the task of emptying them conveniently and safely can be a day-to-day -day challenge. With the help of progressive medical designs and user-driven input, discreet and compact catheters are empowering today's patients with many choices. Today, a company whose mission is to make life easier for people with these intimate health care needs. Also, we meet an inspirational young man whose life was altered after a near-fatal accident and pay a visit to a Hollywood model who's not letting her physical limitations slow her down. I'm Erica Vitrini. Access Health starts now. For the millions of people who need to catheterize, the choice of equipment can mean all the difference in the user's quality of life. We begin today with urologist Dr. Dean Tortorellis, who sees countless patients with a variety of urinary conditions. There are many conditions that can cause the bladder not to function appropriately. That can be uh, from a neurological disease, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, problems in the brain, which could be a stroke, spinal cord issues, which could be impingement of the nerve or spinal cord trauma, spina bifida, diabetes, because that can affect the nerves of the bladder, either sense storage or emptying or post-operative issues. And this can also occur as we get older. There's bladder issues, there's prostate issues in men, or a combination of those. In women, there are changes hormonally. There's changes to the pelvic floor as far as musculature, as far as a support structure. And then there's also changes neurologically that affect how we hold urine. The need to transition to a catheter comes at the point where you can't empty your bladder adequately, you're retaining too much urine, and you're at risk of either having dysfunctional bladder or causing injury to your kidneys. Many times I discuss with patients that they have urinary retention or a neurogenic bladder that's not functioning, that they have to perform self-catheterization. This is a shock to many patients, but I discuss with them that doing self-catheterization will help them long-term to live normal, productive, healthy lives. was out on a lake with a bunch of guys and dove into a shallow area where I unfortunately suffered a C4, C5 spinal cord injury. When I woke up in the hospital, I was laying on a bed, unable to move my legs and feet, uh, everything besides my head, essentially. Very difficult to understand that I was no longer at that time able to get clothes on by myself, go to the restroom by myself, feed myself, even itch my nose. So the adjustment was very difficult mentally, as well as physically, to be laying in a bed for the first three, four weeks after my accident. Your life changes dramatically after anyone has a major injury or um, something like spinal cord injury, it just changes everything. So it was a very tough transition initially, but you kind of decide from the very beginning if you're going to sit around and mope or if you're gonna move on and um, I think we both together as a team decided that we were just going to continue with our lives and we were going to do everything we could to see if he could get better and uh, in the meantime we make it all work together. We're trying to figure out essentially how do we get home. That was my, my number one goal at first was to essentially how do I get home to be with my wife and daughter and in order to do that there was a lot of different steps and stages that I had to understand whether it was physical therapy, whether it was figuring out who would help me on a given day. One of the things that we had to think about was going to the bathroom and whether that was doing intermittent catheter or using an indwelling catheter. So there are two types of catheterization. An indwelling catheter, which is a tube that's in your bladder that stays there and it's changed periodically. And then there is intermittent catheterization or clean intermittent catheterization which is a tube that you put into your bladder to empty your bladder throughout the day. Kirk was the one who really wanted and pushed for intermittent catheterization. And as his wife and his caregiver, I wanted to do anything that I could to make him more comfortable in this new situation that we were in. In patients that have chronic urinary retention or inability to empty the bladder, 
intermittent catheterization is the best option because it decreases the risk of infection, it's much more comfortable, and it protects the upper tracts or the kidneys. Catheters are not new. They've been around a long time, but there's been a natural uh, evolution to the types of catheters, whether or not they're pre-coated or hydrophilic, whether or not you have to add uh, a uh, lubricating substance. Uh, they are very flexible catheters. There are catheters that can get by the prostate. Uh, this is a good time because as we have innovation in a number of different fields, we also have innovations in catheter care and catheters. So what influenced my decision to not have an indwelling catheter is the ability not to have a leg bag constantly on. Kirk has had this fully catheter in with a leg bag for a month. We could try doing intermittent catheterization. We don't know if it'll work or not. We'll have to see how many accidents he has, if it's gonna even work for him. In the hospital, I had someone come in to explain catheters and what would be the best option to use going home. Obviously in the hospital, things are very sterile, things are very clean, things are very large as far as restrooms. And it really was a huge trial run, as well as the products that I used to figure out what was gonna be the most convenient for me and my family. And then they walk you through the process of how you open the gloves correctly, and then how you open the catheter correctly, and then how to uh, prep with the lubricant, and then how to actually insert and hold everything and try not to drop anything on the floor. It's overwhelming at that point, completely overwhelming, and you don't think that you'll ever learn how to do it. Um, and then you make a couple of mistakes, and then you continue on. Welcome back. The integration of intermittent catheterization is a critical step for long-term bladder management. For patients, it can mean the difference between dependence and independence. Having that freedom of self-catheterization allows patients to get back to their life, to be productive members of society, to be able to have their relationships, to be able to have the ability to work and do the jobs like they did prior to whatever insult or cause of what had happened to them to cause retention or cause their inability to urinate. As I was starting to transition from hospital back to home, I had to consider if I was going to continue to work. I enjoy having the, the drive and the challenge to figure problems out. I didn't want to be a person that just sat around all day and waiting for my wife and daughter to get home. I wanted to contribute to the family. I wanted to have a mental exhaustion as well as a physical with my therapy that I was going into. My bladder management fit into work schedule by allowing work to essentially let me work from my house initially so that would make it easier to understand kind of how that would play with my wife being my caregiver and understanding how could I eventually get back into the office and how we would be able to transition that back to kind of our old norm of going to work, working out, taking care of our daughter. My wife helps me catheterize whether we're out at a sporting event or at home. And we really tried to figure out what product would be the best for our family, for me, in our busy lifestyle. And so we wanted something that was compact that would be able to fit in a small container. With having a daughter, we had a lot of other things to bring with. And so we wanted something that was smaller. We also wanted something that was quicker, so that way on the run, we'd be able to easily use the catheter and continue with whatever we were doing that day. Kirk sat down with the nurses um, and tested out a couple of different options. And he picked the one that he liked, and or down to two that he thought were good options. And uh, we tried both, and that was actually really a game changer because it was like, oh, I don't have to remember so much stuff. This is so much easier. I can do this. Anyone can do this with the right level of instruction and comfort. Um, so it made life a lot easier. Having to do self-catheterization initially can be very overwhelming. We try to make the experience, the educational component, uh, paramount, and we try to uh, make sure that the patients understand how to do the procedure. The importance of a bladder management plan is that the patient is able to ultimately perform self intermittent catheterization or intermittent catheterization from a care giver, that they do it effectively, that they do it safely, that they do it uh, appropriately. Part of my role here is patient education. I go in and educate the patient as well as answering questions of their concerns and how they are going to be able to do this on a daily basis. The 
use of the correct catheter as well as the correct equipment and the correct method is going to be a key component in proper bladder care. I've done this for a long time. I know that it's simple and easy and I want the patient to feel that way too. I want them to be able to go home and go, okay, I can do this. I mean, over my 16 years, I've seen advancement in catheter care and design and ease of catheterization for the patient. Catheters now are more compact, discreet, they're easy to use. The new catheters also um, cause much less uh, irritation, much less trauma to the urethra, especially in men, because in men who have large prostates or have um, neurogenic bladders, to get by the prostate or into the bladder can be very challenging with the more rigid type catheters. So the newer catheters um, are much more uh, soft. They uh, mimic a curve that uh, can get by the prostate and it's much more comfortable and much more easy to get into the bladder. After trying a lot of different products, I was able to find one that was compact, very discreet, which allowed me and my wife to go to ball games, parks, different activities, and still continue on. We both really liked the Speedy Cath Compact Set because it was in a small container, it was easy to open, easy to use, it was all in one. Um, you didn't have to touch any part that could possibly go inside him. Um, and you know, we just were both really comfortable with it. By having this product, it's allowed me to not have to plan a day around going to the bathroom. It allows me to plan a day on what do I want to do. Be able to go hang out with the friends at their house and not have to worry about always having certain supplies with me. This allows me to have one product with me and to bring several of them if I'm not going to be home for uh, a number of hours or a number of days for that matter. This product is so much simpler to use that it was easy for me to teach Kirk's family members who are also part of his care team how to use it. Having a product that makes it easier for us to leave the house, it makes it easier for me to go to work and know that whoever else is Kirk's caregiver is not gonna have any issues, it makes everything just a little bit less stressful. Being able to get out of the house and, and go work out is something I look forward to on a given week. Being an athlete throughout my life has definitely helped me be driven and understand what it means to do hard work so that I can get better. I mean, 20 to 25 hours a week might be daunting to some people to work out, and it's something that I do every single week, and I'm driven to hold my daughter. That's my goal. My name is Tatiana Lee. I am an actor, model, and lifestyle blogger, and I live in Los Angeles, California. I was born with a birth defect called spina bifida, which technically means I was born with a hole in my spine. I am 35 years old, and my family is amazing. I live with my mother and my sister, and they are the greatest support system in my everything. Growing up as a kid, I went from using a walker or and crutches to wheelchair, depending on the situation. But I was one of those kids, I wanted to keep up with everyone else. I didn't see myself as being different, so I didn't see myself as the person that couldn't be included. I was gonna find a way to be included. So due to my spina bifida, I've always had to have intermittent cathing done, and my mom always did it for me as a little girl. But when I got to be a little bit older and it was time to you know, make friends and go to slumber parties and stuff, my mom told me, in order for me to go stay tonight at someone's house, I had to learn how to cath myself. The medical equipment that was used to do cathing was a lot. It was, my catheter was about this long, and I had to have lube, wipes, gloves, you had to clean your hands really good. Like, it was this whole medical procedure and it was very, very intimidating. I would have to take breaks, I cried, like I wanted to learn how to do it. So I really fought for that independence. And finally, after about a month or two, I learned how to do it. So going from a teen to an adult and, you know, came college and 
being more active in society and I had to learn how to downsize my products that I used to, you know, cast myself on the go. I had to come up with my own ways of what's gonna work for me and what's gonna work for my life. I really had to think outside the box. So sometimes going on open castings, it can be a very long day. I found it very frustrating to have to carry all these things and have these longer catheters and carry all these extra supplies just so I could be sanitary or just go to the bathroom. So I was looking to downsize my purse and my on-the-go bag as much as possible. I happened to be at the Abilities Expo. So I saw the Speedy Cat Compact Female and I was so excited. It was small, compact, it was designed for me as a woman. I thought it was so cute because it was literally the size of a lipstick. I said, this could fit just in my makeup bag alone. I was ecstatic. I was so excited to try it because it just made me so good. I was like, wow, here's a product that you know I can take with me on the go. It, it already has a solution in it. It's no touch which covers my sanitary issue that I have of wanting to be sanitary. And I was like, this is perfect. It really made me feel empowered as an independent woman. Every patient's needs are different, and there are a number of very good catheters. What it comes down to is, what is the ease of use of the product? for the patient, what helps the patient empty their bladder with less trauma, concealability, and comfort. Coming up, a user-driven approach to catheter designs are at the forefront of helping patients live better lives. Welcome back. Today's catheter users have more choices than ever and the landscape can be difficult to navigate. As we've mentioned, finding the right catheter is a very personal decision, often filled with trial and error. Access Health recently spoke with Coloplast, a leader in intimate healthcare, about their patient-focused innovation, as well as their mission to provide support well beyond the products they make. Our mission here is to make life easier for individuals with intimate health care needs. Coloplast Care is a personal support program and we provide support in a variety of ways, whether that's over the phone, online, via emails with a program that we have called My Continence Check. Uh, we also provide wellness documents. At the heart of Coloplast Care is a team of advisors who are available to help individuals uh, with their bladder management needs. As a care advisor, I think the most beneficial uh, part of our care program is the one-on-one -on -one support over the phone from the care team. My job is to make sure that these catheter users feel comfortable, that they have someone to speak with to support them, and to make sure that they're getting the correct catheters at all times. Uh, we try to make it as smooth of a process as possible. We understand that things change along your journey. We're going to be available for you 10 years down that line. We have a team of individuals that are ready to support you at, uh, at your time of need. I feel that most clinicians that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis do a very good job of educating these people that are using our products, but there are people that really still feel the need to have those conversations on product usage and how many times a day. They need us there to walk them through that and kind of reiterate it, because when they're in that office being told to use those catheters, I feel like not everything is, is sinking in right then and there. We have those tough conversations with people. We try to also have those quality conversations with their family members or whomever it is that is catheterizing them and make sure that they're on the same page and make sure that they feel comfortable doing this uh, to and for someone that they love. We will reach out to the clinicians and get the updated prescriptions so we can send out new samples. We're constantly there as an advocate for them to make sure that this is as easy as possible, uh, that it's a seamless process for them. With the innovation of these new catheters, we've empowered patients to really take care of themselves and help themselves. Uh, and Coloplast has done a wonderful job at uh, spending many research hours trying to find out what is the best product, what's the best way to care for these patients and get them back to normalcy. 
Thank you to all of our guests today for helping us navigate through this extremely important topic. And a very special thanks to Kirk and Tatiana for sharing their personal stories with us. For more information or if you have any questions about the intimate healthcare products discussed here today, visit coloplast.us. And as always, you can find a variety of helpful links on our website, accesshealth.tv. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. See you next time. <laughs>